I'm Richard Waterhouse, I'm Chief Exec of NBS. The UK has been uh, leading the change uh, to building information modelling as a nation and have gained a reputation for um, expertise in how to transform construction into a digital industry. And building information modelling is the, the terminology and the tool set that we use to do that. In the UK we already have existing BIM standards but it's important that we move to deliver our businesses based on the new international standards and to do that we need to understand what the transition will be. So in the first case we have ISO 19650 part 1. These are the overall concepts that will be very familiar to all of us in the UK, albeit that some of the names have changed and we'll, we can talk about how we change those names with the transition guidance. So those overall concepts remind all of the parties and in particular the clients and others as to what to expect in a project that implements BIM. We get a lot more detail in 19650 part 2 and that's where we start to understand how we are going to name things, what the processes will be, what the expectations of hosting data will be in common data environments. And to help our UK customers, um, we have the transition guidance, PD 19650-0. And that's the, the start of the guidance that we'll provide the industry so they can understand the transition from what was a UK set of documents to documents that they'll be able to use all over the world. Well, that has to be many and varied. At a detailed level, for those people who are involved in projects internationally, those uh, organisations that collaborate with international partners, it will give a single way of working, a new way of working. The delivery of the ISO standards is a fantastic opportunity for all of those organisations in the UK that want to work internationally. We will be able to take the demonstrable expertise that we have and the improvements in process that we've delivered in the UK and take those into other international markets. It means that we will be able to demonstrate our expertise and provide the support to other clients, other organisations around the world um, with the standard, based on this standard. So wherever you go, we'll be operating the same way. And we should remember, of course, that any project which has been started on the British standards will maintain the application of the British standards. But all players in the project will benefit because what BIM does and what the process does is to be certain about the information that you're exchanging, about the decisions that are needed, and to clarify the process to improve the process and make everybody more efficient. It will mean that we will be able to apply our methodology, our ways of working into many more places. We'll be able to take our services and deliver projects effectively in the countries where those standards are applied. But this really is only the start of a journey. We have parts one and two. Uh, we have further work now to take the what was 1192 part three and to turn that into the ISO so we can manage the assets effectively across the world using a single international standard and to do the same with security and security minded principles and applying those principles as a new ISO document in the future as well. For those organisations who want to understand the changes with the new ISO documents, we've provided some transition guidance to help them through the changes to understand what the principles are and how they're different to the 1192 documents and how they can apply them easily using the new documents. We'll also support them with additional guidance in the future and through a series of conferences that will be organised through BSI.